This is how to get started uh, using Issue. Uh, today we'll be covering uh, preparing your document for upload, how to upload your content, how to create and share stories, how to add links and media content, video content to your publications, uh, statistics, uh, how to check them and uh, everything that's included with that, how to share your publications uh, across social media, uh, email, and then also how to embed your content directly to your website, uh, and then finally how to sell your publication. Uh, real quick on preparing your document for upload, uh, page dimensions, the issue reading experience is responsive and will adapt to various screen sizes from desktops to mobile devices. This means that you can upload a publication with any uh, page dimension. Single page spreads are uh, what we need for uploads with issue. Please upload your content with single page spreads. Our system will automatically convert them to two page spreads. If you do upload content with two page spreads, it will show up on issue as four pages. Uh, any of the accepted file types are those below. Uh, Word documents, uh, PowerPoint, uh, WordPerfect, rich uh, text format, uh, PDF, uh, those are all the recommended uh, file types to upload to issue. Uh, best practices, uh, make sure your document will open without problems in a desktop reader. Uh, so if you're checking that in uh, Acrobat Reader or in Preview, uh, that will probably be best. Uh, make sure your file is not password protected. Uh, also make sure uh, user access is not restricted. Uh, image resolution can be up to 150 dpi. Uh, if it's any higher than that, it would be scaled down automatically. Uh, if you have added links, then export the document as an interactive PDF. Before we actually jump into the platform, uh, just real quick, uh, we have a partnership with Apple News. Uh, anyone who is using our Stories feature, which is our mobile optimization tool, you can see an example of that on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, we are actually looking for publishers to feature on our Apple News channel. You don't need to register. Uh, you don't need to do anything other than uh, upload your content to issue using the Stories feature. Uh, and make sure that you, when you post it to social media, that you use hashtag issue stories. That way our team is going to look for those and then feature those on our Apple News channel. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to jump into the tool. Uh, the first thing that we're going to cover is how to upload a document. So you can upload your document from a couple of places. There's a plus sign up here. This is an upload button. You can also click over here, add content, and you can begin adding your content from here. To add your content, all you need to do is simple drag and drop right into here, or you can click into this and then select your file to upload. So you just go along, you pick whatever uh, publication it is that you want to upload uh, to issue. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go down and I'm going to select my file and then click open and then it will begin the upload process. Uh, during this process, what it's doing is it's converting it over into the digital flipbook. While that's happening, you can go ahead and you can begin adding uh, basic information. Uh, your title, you can add your description, uh, make sure to include any sort of keywords. Uh, this is going to help with SEO not only within issue, uh, but also people who are looking across uh, search engines as all the, uh, the words in this will be indexed by Google, other search engines, and people will be able to find your content that way. You can include what sort of uh, publication it is, whether it's an editorial, promotional marketing, book, or other. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select editorial. You can also set a backdate for your publication. So if you want to upload publications from the past, you can open up Backdate and just simply select from a calendar when that publication was originally uploaded. Uh, show Detected Links this is our feature that will automatically find links within your publication. If you have anything written out uh, in our example here, www.example.com, our software will automatically find that uh, and make that publication uh, available that way. Uh, availability, we have two different options here. Uh, public, which is our default. This means all of your publications uploaded under public will be available to find either on your public profile uh, or searching through uh, issues search functions uh, and it also will be found um, by search engines as everything on there is indexed. Uh, if you are wanting to upload something for maybe a specific group or uh, maybe you want it to be private, you can go ahead and you can use our unlisted feature. This will prevent it from being indexed by Google, and the only way to view that content is if you send it to them directly or you embed that to your website. You can also schedule public launch. Uh, you can click into here and simply click 
the date and time when you want your publication to automatically be pushed live. Uh, if you want to go ahead and just make it published uh, live automatically, you can go ahead and just skip over that. You can also make your publications available for download. Simply by checking this, uh, readers will be able to download a PDF version of your publication. Uh, in the bottom right corner, there's a little download icon. They can click that and then begin uh, downloading your publication to read offline. So you can see now uh, our file has been successfully converted over into a digital version. So now my publication is, is ready to upload uh, and make live. Uh, if I want to do that, all I need to do is just go ahead and click Publish Now. So from this point, what I can do is I can go back over to Publish, click on Publications, and then I can see that I have my new publication over here. Uh, it's on the very top. So any new publications that you upload will be up top. Any older ones will be down towards the bottom. If you decided to wait to publish your document, it would still sit over here in draft section until you're ready to actually publish that live. Uh, same goes for scheduled. Anything that you do schedule a time will live in there until that date and time comes up and it will automatically be pushed into your publish section. Uh, from this point, what we're going to do is we're going to create a story. So we're going to turn an article from this publication that we just uploaded uh, over into a mobile optimized uh, vertical scroll experience that you can easily share across social media uh, or send to people where you know they're going to open that publication up in their phone. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on Create Stories. And I'm going to click Create New Story. From this point, I can go ahead and I can select from a, a different pages that I want to include uh, into this uh, mobile optimized story experience. Uh, the, story, the pages don't need to be in exact order. I can click any pages that I want. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select pages 76, 77, 78, and 79. If I did want to select other pages out of order, I can always do that. So now you can see over here on the right, I have 76 or 79 and then 83. Uh, I don't really want this included. Um, or if you click something by accident, you can always just check it off. So from that point, what I'm going to do is begin building my story. Uh, the name of this story is Learning to Be Myself. I can include a story description. Again, any sort of keywords are definitely important here. This is going to help people find your content organically by searching through issue. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go over and skip it for, for time's sake, um, but definitely recommend anyone including a story description for that. Categories, we have 19 different categories that you can choose from. You just go ahead and pick the category that best fits your content. Uh, in this case, I'm going to click Health and Fitness, and then Next. So from this place, what it's going to do is take me over to the Story Editor. In the Story Editor, you're going to see over on the left-hand side, uh, anything that we call detected segments, that's images or text, those are going to be pieced out into separate sections. And you can see as I click over them, they'll actually highlight each of those. So what I want to do to start building my story uh, is I'm going to just start clicking on these and have them populate over in the right hand side, which is our editor section. So I'm going to uh, include the quick synopsis here and then also the credit. And then I'm going to want to change the paragraph size. So everything automatically goes to paragraph. In this case, I want to make this byline. And then the same goes for the credit. And then I'm going to start actually adding the body of the content. I'm going to click here, change this subtitle over to subtitle and then just begin adding uh, the paragraphs. You'll see as I click them, they do add over uh, in the order that I click them. They'll also be noted uh, by these numbers here. So as I click these, these are how they, uh, these will populate and then show that over on the left-hand side. So with this story, I have my text, but I do also want to include my images. So I have these images here. So what I'm going to do is actually click on these. And you'll see they'll pop up on the bottom. And what I can easily do is just click this little move up button. And I can move them up within the text just to make sure that everything's integrated in a way. Um, that's just going to be an easier experience for my audience. So I, now that I have that integrated, the last thing that I want to do uh, with this section is add this quote. So you can see I have a quote right here. I'm going to go ahead and just click add to story here at the bottom. And now because it is a quote, what I'm going to want to do is actually change the paragraph so it makes sure it, it uh, stands out differently. I'm going to click quote, and then I'm going to actually move this up as well. So from this point, uh, I basically have my story created. I can go ahead and I can click preview story. And I can see what that experience will look like from the reader's perspective. 
uh, it pulls in that first image uh, as the title. I can always go back and I can change that anytime if I want to with the gear button and just select whatever images I want. In this case, I do want to keep that image. Uh, you'll also notice it says three minute read. It lets the reader know how long the read is based on the amount of text that's within that story. Uh, and then I can scroll through and just make sure that everything is built out the way that I want to. Uh, I want my readers to be able to see this content in an engaging way, uh, mixing the images and text. Uh, in this case, this is how I ever want everything to look. You'll also notice at the very bottom there is a link. This goes right back to the publication as a whole. So this is a great place for you to share your content across social media and then drive readers back to your uh, entire publication. If I'm happy with this, all I have to do is just click Publish Now. And then it will actually give me a URL link that I can share out uh, through any of the channels, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, uh, email, anywhere that you want to share that, you can do that easily with that URL. So from this point, what we're going to do is we're going to move over to Add Links in Media. So we're going to go back over to Publish. We're going to click on Publications. In this case, if I wanted to add links in media, I would just select whatever publication is I want to add these links to. I'm just going to go ahead and continue building this publication that I recently uploaded. And then on the left-hand side, under Enhance, uh, just below Create Stories where we just were, we can click Add Links in uh, Video. And you can see here it pulls up the pages um, from the entire publication. There are some pages noted for links over here. There may be some more down below. These are picked up by the Auto Detect link. Uh, if there aren't any other public uh, or links uh, within that content, they won't show there uh, unless they're written out. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to go ahead and do is automatically uh, add some links to this. So what I could easily do uh, is I can click on any of these pages. And then I always like to zoom in just to make it easier. And then I can go ahead and I can start adding links. Uh, let's just say in this situation I wanted to add a link to this. I can basically just take my cursor, I can draw, and then I can insert a link from here. In this case, I'm going to select Google. And this is my web link, so I can go ahead and just click Done. And then I'll just click Save. Now my link is actually saved. I can go ahead and, as the reader, I can click on this. It will note to me uh, that, this uh, that this link is clickable. Uh, but I also want to add some other links before I move on. So let's just say that I, there was some space for me to add, add a video content, and let's just say I want to add that content right here. So I'm actually going to zoom out because this is a little bit larger, and I'm going to add my video content, and let's just say I, wanna, I had some extra free space right here that I wanted to add it to. I can draw a frame, and then I'll just move over from web and select video. And I'm just going to grab a video. In order to share a video uh, to your publication, all you need to do is copy the URL from that YouTube link or Vimeo. And then you can plug that directly into your publication just like that. We have a couple options. You can either play an overlay, which will essentially uh, gray out the background of your publication and then center that video uh, in middle of the publication while the reader is in it. You can also click Embed in Publication. What this will do is wherever you draw that frame, your publication will display or we can embed in publication and autoplay. It will be playing within that frame that we draw. Uh, this will automatically play the moment that the reader goes over and clicks onto it. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And then I'm going to click Save. Uh, the last thing I, I want to show you on this is we can also add uh, shopping links uh, as well as uh, links that will drive people to other pages. So I'm going to zoom back in here. And then let's just say that I wanted to add a shopping link uh, over here. So what I could do is I can just, again, draw a frame wherever I want that link to live. And then instead of video, I'll move over to shopping. And then I can click done. Uh, the difference between the shopping link and the web link is it will display a shopping cart icon. Uh, it will just drive people to whatever that specific product is, and they can go ahead and make that purchase. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you before we move on, if you ever do have a table of contents, uh, or a story that continues on another page. We can again just draw a frame wherever we want, we want that link to live. We can click go to page and then we would just select whatever page it is that we want to drive somebody to. Uh, in this case I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to click 80 and then done. So we have our different links here. I'm going to click save again and then I'm going to view in the reader just so we can see what that's going to look like. So 
So we have our video up here on top. It's going to autoplay. We have our other links over here. You can see that they're highlighted with that light uh, blue just to notify to the reader uh, that there is clickable content on here. If I click this, it'll drive me in a new tab uh, over to whatever that link is. Same with the shopping link. And then finally, uh, the same with the, uh, the, the page link. So if I click this, it'll automatically open me to that page. So the next thing that we're going to move on to is statistics. So again, I'm going to hop back over to publish. Uh, over on the left-hand side, you'll see below publications, where all of our publications live, you'll see statistics. So when I click here, this is going to show me the stats for all my publications. Uh, we'll be tracking things like reads. That's any time um, a reader reads your publication for more than two seconds. Impressions. That's just any time somebody sees your publication, whether that's on issue uh, or on any of your embeds on your website or posted to social media. Uh, number of followers you have, likes, uh, the number of shares, and then also the number of link outs. So that's any time somebody clicks a link within your publication. You can look at those same uh, statistics under uh, a graph form if you like, and we have preset dates here. You can look at these. You can also do an all-time or create a custom one if you like. And then we have a best in class. This is going to give you an idea of which publications are performing best in certain key categories. Uh, this one right here, this is going to be showing you the best cover, which is getting the most reads per 1,000 impressions. The most engaging is just whichever publications are getting the most average time spent reading. And then which publications are getting shared the most by your readers. As we scroll down, you'll see all publications. If I click into this, uh, this will show me uh, statistics for a specific publication where before those were sort of everything combined. So if I want to learn more, I can click on this. I can also see all of my publications by seeing uh, show all. And I'm going to click into this just to dive in a little bit more about this specific publication. Uh, again, we're going to get things like reads, impressions, but now we're going to get average time spent reading for this publication, total time spent reading, number of likes we get, the publication shares for this particular issue, um, stacks or anytime somebody saves your publication within issue, and then again, uh, link outs, the number of times people click on links within that particular publication. Uh, we can click download. We can download these stats into a CSV file if you wanted. But again, you can always go back and you can check these uh, in real time whenever you like. Uh, publication performance, again, we can go ahead and we can click, oops, we can click from any of the preset dates that we have right here. And then what we'll get on the publication level is page performance. So we'll actually be able to look at how many either reads or read time, average time spent reading or impressions we're getting on an actual page level. And then the same goes for link outs. So you can see how many clicks on links uh, for a particular page that you're getting within this uh, issue. The last bit of uh, information you'll get with the statistics are who your reader is. So the first thing is you'll understand what sort of device that they're using, whether it's desktop, tablet, or mobile. Uh, also, where your reader is coming from. So are they finding your content mostly on issue? Or are they finding your content on embeds, which is anything that's not on issue, that's uh, embedded to your website or any links that you share to social media? Uh, and then just a quick look at who your readers are from around the world. So it will show you your top 10 countries uh, and then also give you a number of reads you're getting in those particular countries. So the next thing that we're going to move on to here is our... Um, embed and sharing feature. Uh, this is going to be how you share your content. We're going to go and click back on publications. And then I'm going to want to add this uh, publication to my website. So what I'll do is I'll click on it. And then on the left hand side, you'll see embed on website. When I click here, this is going to go ahead and take me to a page where I can set up my parameters to share my uh, publication directly on my website. I can go ahead and I can set my size I'd like. I can change the, uh, the responsive width if I want. It will automatically adjust to the size of the website. Uh, if I wanted the publication to start on a particular page, I can do that. But if I do want to start on the cover, I would keep it on one. I can also change the background color. So if there's a specific color I wanted to change, uh, something to match the branding of my website, I can do that. I can choose from a specific gradient. I can also make my publication single page or keep it on double. And I can auto flip. So every few seconds, the publication will turn pages uh, and just entice the reader to, to engage with your content. When you're on the premium plan, you'll also notice you can do things like remove the Powered by Issue bar at the bottom here. 
We can also show our other publications as suggestions. So if I click this, I'll now see See More, and this will drive readers to other content that you may have. If I ever wanted to make sure my publishers, or sorry, my readers couldn't share my content, I can click Hide the Share button. And then I will no longer have the share button here. If I do want my readers to be able to share my content, I'll just leave that unchecked. And then readers can easily share your content by clicking on any of these widgets, or they can just copy the URL right there and share that through any channel they like. So the last thing I'll, I need to do here is just click Create New. And then it will generate some code for me. This is HTML5. Uh, makes it very easy to share your content and embed it directly to your website. From this point, all you really need to do is just copy this. You can click here and copy it, or you can click Copy to Clipboard. And then all you have to do is just paste it into your website and it will display just like it does on Issue. Uh, our default one is HTML5. If for whatever reason that does not work, you can always use the iframe. Uh, and then the last thing that we have on here is our shareable full screen reader link. This is great for email campaigns, sharing to social media, uh, also just sending to somebody directly, or if you're using it as a presentation, this is a great thing to use. It's just a URL. When the reader will click on it, it'll open up that publication automatically in full screen. So the last bit that we're gonna cover on this is how to sell your content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to my publications and I'm going to click on sales. So I'm going to use my latest publication. And all I need to do to get this set up uh, is basically just set the price. So I can set the price for this particular publication. I can select my currency. In this case, I'm going to leave it on US. And then I'm going to click continue. So from here, it's going to open up all my pages, and I'm going to be able to select uh, pages I want to be available for a preview. All I do is just click on these pages. I can click as many or as little as I like. Generally, we recommend that people share uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 percent of that publication. You can scatter those out, and then people can go ahead and they can read your content, um, but you're also going to have a paywall there that's going to prompt people to make that purchase. But you do want to have some in there to entice the reader uh, to go ahead and and understand what your content is. So from this point, I'm going to go ahead and just click continue. And it's going to show me a quick preview of what my publication is going to look like um, from a purchase perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and make this full screen here. You'll notice in the top left, there's a buy button. If I click this, this will drive me directly to a purchase page. At the bottom, you'll notice there's light gray sections and then there's dark sections. The light gray sections are the sections that we chose for a free preview. As I click through here, uh, you can see this content is available to read. If I get to a section that is paywalled, it'll go ahead and make that prompt for the reader to make that purchase, or they can keep reading and looking through the different content that is available for the free preview. If I did want to make that purchase, I can go ahead and just click Buy Now, and it would drive the reader to that purchase page. So from this point, uh, basically, all I would need to do is I need to connect my publication with Stripe. Uh, you would just set that up, and then you would connect that directly to Stripe. From that point, you can basically um, you're basically done, and you can make your publication available for sale. You can do this both in single issues and in subscriptions, uh, and then embed this directly to your website, and people can easily purchase your publications from there. So that pretty much covers everything that we have on our free preview here today. Thank you everybody for joining. Uh, if you do have any questions, we do have uh, webinars that come up uh, every Wednesday specifically around stories. Uh, but thank you again for everyone for, for listening and uh, happy publishing.